the Airbus A300 versus Boeing 767, two of the first twin-engine widebodies, two medium-sized, medium-range airliners, two reliable workhorses. Which is better? Before we answer this, if you're new here, a warm welcome and do stay tuned for more great videos on the way. Starting with performance and we'll compare the A300-600R and 767-300-300ER variants in this video, mainly as they had their first flights within 2 years of each other and are closer in performance. A300 600R carries 247 passengers in a typical two class layout, flying 4050 nautical miles. The 767 carries more at 261 but flies shorter distances with range of 3900 nautical miles. All in all, the A300 has more range but 767 has more passenger carrying capability. Engines The A300 may be European but it's powered by American engines only, specifically either GE CF6 or PW4158 engines, producing 56,000 to 61,000 pounds of thrust depending on variant. 767 has the most engine choice of any white body, either JT90 CF6 PW4000 or RB211 engines, with the more powerful engines used on higher weight versions producing up to 60,600 pounds of thrust. Neither are powered by the latest generation of engines, and neither are the most efficient. Still, back then, these were some of the cheapest white bodies to run. Looking at the charts of efficiency, both burn virtually identical amounts of fuel, with A300 600R getting a slight 0.6% fuel burn improvement, burning 4,770 kilos per hour, and 767 304,800 kilos per hour. Anyways, moving on to cabins. A300 uses Airbus's proven 222-inch cabin width, allowing for comfortable 2x4x2 configuration with 18-inch seats and a 3x3x3 configuration for high-density seating. A300 was one of the most comfortable aircraft at the time, also getting a quieter cabin. 767 featured Boeing's new signature interior first featured on 777 for later built versions, though early built versions had basic interiors. Boeing promoted the larger and strengthened overhead bins able to take more bags and more lavatories. The aircraft initially featured 18-inch wide seats in a comfortable 2x3x2 layout, though later versions had 8 abreast with narrow seats for more seats. Both certainly pale to the interiors of today, which are both more comfortable and modern. Advantages and disadvantages, the A300 was one of the most innovative aircraft back then, and the Dash 600 built upon that with more electric systems to control flight control services. It was also more common with previous A300 versions with the same type ratings with A310, minimizing pilot transition times and training costs. It's proven reliable and had decent cargo capabilities as well. However, it lacked the range and potential of later 767 versions, though competing with the more capable 767s was a task left to its successor, the A330. The 767 was a newer design that grew into a more capable aircraft and set the standard for white bodies. 
orders. Well, the 767 sold much better overall, selling 687 units for all Dash 300 versions, and Dash 600 versions sold 313 units. Still, Airbus would quickly catch up with Boeing with the launch of the A330, which would overtake 767 in performance. So then, A300 or 767, which is better? These are some of the earliest widebody twins at the time and were closely matched. A300 was sooner to the market. All in all, the A300-600 cannot compete with the newer 767. Do you agree? Comment below. To meet next time, clear skies ahead.